Anthony Camillo is the 24-year-old Staten Island man who shot and killed Frankie Cali, the boss of the Gambino crime family. It was initially believed that Camillo was a hitman for the mafia, bought and paid for by rival mobsters who wanted Cali dead. It was also believed that Camillo got close to Cali because he was dating his niece Rosemary. In the classical sense, none of that was true. Camillo was a patsy of a different kind. He appeared in arraignment court with the words MAGA forever, patriots in charge, and the infamous symbol for QAnon etched on his hand. Camillo was deep down a rabbit hole. Months earlier, a team of highly skilled QAnon grifters per- persuaded Camillo to kill Cali and others. He was systematically radicalized to execute multiple political hits against the deep state. Camillo believed he was operating under the direct protection of the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. He said he was informed by the President that if he took care of Cali, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, Rep. Adam Schiff, and or Representative Maxine Waters, President Trump would save him. On March 13, 2019, Camillo drove his silver pickup truck to the front of Cali's Toad Hill home, pulled out a 9mm handgun, and killed him. Upon his capture, Camillo confessed to the murder. Marcus Conti reporting on the QAnon killer, and we're going to call out some uh, one individual today. There's more on the list, but we're going to talk and we're going to try to be nice and friendly and uh, hi, Mr. Praying Medic. My name is Marcus Conti, and we just want to poke around a little bit, find out what it is, uh, how it is you might uh, be connected to this thing. Uh, so before we meet Mr. Praying Medic, uh, yeah, let's, let's meet Mr. Praying Medic. Hi, Praying Medic. I'm going to introduce you to everybody. So this is Praying Medic, a, uh, an individual with uh, 276 thousand subscribers on average his videos get 30,000 views per per hit per view right so let's have a look at uh this is the praying medic this is what he looks like this is what he sounds like and then i want to show you we'll introduce the other characters and how it connects to the grooming the grooming see the story is 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 not that simple right who are the grifters? Who are the people that programmed the killer? That's all we're trying to find out. Right? Because according to the court documents, thousands of entries were made on various sites. Now, we haven't seen them yet because they haven't been made public. But there is somebody who does have them and does know this, the answer to those questions. And in open court, we are going to find out. We're going to hear the whole thing. And if it doesn't come out in court, we will find out shortly after. So so here's Mr. Praying Medic talking to his audience of 276,000 people. Let's hear. We, we overcome, in a lot of ways, we overcome things by tackling them, by uh, going after them, by confronting them. Uh, Jill, I see that you're on here. Um, I don't know if you're listening. You might be, might be at work. But uh, Jill came out here to Arizona last week, and she uh, she had back pain. And uh, we were sitting here in the kitchen talking, and I said, "Well, let's get you healed of the back pain." She had back and neck pain, and. Uh, It turns out, what I've found out is, a lot of people have physical symptoms of chronic pain and illness. It's actually related to emotional trauma. And the emotional trauma is generally uh, connected to events and things from our past that we have not dealt with properly. So I walked Jill through a little process where we dealt with this emotional trauma and boom, her back pain, uh, neck pain was gone. And what I've found in getting people healed is sometimes you can get people healed of physical symptoms and illness just by releasing power, sometimes by exercising authority, but many times 
the healing comes in dealing with past issues that we have not properly dealt with. Healing emotional wounds, uh, sometimes forgiveness, sometimes getting a different perspective on that past situation, and sometimes confronting and dealing with those issues in a different way. A lot of times it's letting go of things like anger uh, or uh, giving up uh, feelings of shame and guilt, giving those to God, letting Him take those things from you. That is, uh, that is a very, very important process in, in being healed. Um, yeah, if your life is a mess and you're trying to have faith, uh, faith, is, faith is like a mustard seed. Uh, parable of the mustard seed, Jesus said, you know, he actually said, not in the parable of the mustard seed, he said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, be moved, and it'll move, be thrown into the ocean. All right, a lot of people say that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that's not what he said. He said if you have faith as a mustard seed, the way a mustard seed. So whatever he's talking about, he's talking about turning your will and your life over, right? Pretty much. Have faith. It's just, a, just an introduction to uh, Mr. Praying Medic, right? So that's Mr. Praying Medic. And then we're going to look at the specifics, how it pertains to QAnon. So <clears throat> this is Frankie Cali, the boss of the Gambino crime family, the late boss of the Gambino crime family, who was shot and killed in front of his house by Anthony Camillo one day in Staten Island, one early evening in Staten Island. There's a lot of details to it that are now coming out in the, uh, in the court record. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Camillo did confess to the murder, and uh, he's definitely dead. There's his uh, folks carrying him, out of, carrying, carrying him out of the funeral parlor on Staten Island. Scarpacci, Scarpacci Funeral Parlor, Funeral Home. And this is Mr. Camillo right here with his lawyer, uh, Robert Gottlieb. Uh, so this is, this is the lawyer, Mr. Medic, praying medic. Uh, this is the lawyer, Robert Gottlieb. This is Anthony Camillo in Staten Island Court. Uh, learn, learn the characters. Well, you already do. You know them, don't you? And here he is in court, and he flashes an unmistakable cue. It, it, unescapable. What else could it be? United, United we stand, MAGA forever, patriots in charge. Cue. Uh, inescapably cue. In the court. He also said, don't believe in fairy tales, he told the press. He said a lot of other things, too about where he threw the gun, that he that his involvement with the mafia or lack thereof. So it's a lot of facts on the record already. And there he is smiling, having a good old time. Not a drug addict, not a what what does not appear to be a crazy person, but a regular person who is very persuaded by sweet talk, by godly talk, religious Inspiration, perhaps. And there is the Q, the infamous Q. The infamous Q on his hand. So let's have a look at how it pertains to Q and on, right? So I'm not a big follower of Q and on, but I know enough. And this is what a Q and on post looks like. Here's one from, so Q and on was gone for a long time and now he's back. He's back, and Mr. Praying Medic didn't waste any, any time to, to uh, revel, rival, roll around in the new drops. So here's one from 11, 11 and 19, and uh, you'll see the QAnon connection. You'll see the Anthony Camillo connection in one second. Governed and sustained by the organized opinion of mankind. And then uh, another quote, educate and inform the whole mass of people they are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty, Thomas Jefferson. All right. Q asked a series of questions. Uh, the calm before the storm statement made by POTUS. When was that made? Month and day that the Q public campaign was initiated. What was the month and day that Durham was initiated? What famous crime family did Durham target? 
we get the answer to that in an article, a Time article that Q linked to. Durham also spearheaded mob prosecutions of the Gambino, Genovese, and uh, Patriarca crime families. Note the Gambino family is in brackets. Also note that Durham is the good guy. Durham is Trump's good guy going after the bad guys. Right? That's, how, that's how Q is pitching it. Durham, good guy, he went after the mob bosses, the bad guys. So something may be going down with them. That is a quote from the article Q linked to. What ABC agency did Durham target? C is in brackets. We know that Durham investigated the CIA for uh, abuse related to torture. Uh, then Q asked how are messages sent? There's a link to a Rolling Stone article about the killing of mob boss Frank Kelly. And then below that, now, Q is not able to access the 8chan board where his posts are, were previously hosted. None of us can access that board. So, and Q used to pull screen caps. So there it is, Q, the real character, the actual character Q, not the groomer praying medic, is talking about this article in Rolling Stone magazine. Now, it was published, the story was widely published throughout the mass media. Every, every outlet covered it. I think even the Young Turks covered it. Uh, I was in the courtroom. I was, I was there. I've interviewed the actual uh, attorney. You can follow my QAnon killer videos and watch. I, ta I asked, I asked the, uh, the attorney for Anthony Camillo what happened. You know, what was his connection to the QAnon rabbit hole? And he told me, if you'd like to watch that. So, so here is the, here's the evidence of QAnon putting out the story. The groomer is telling the story to the seekers. And there's more. Attorneys that was uh, appointed by Sessions to investigate leaks and corruption. This is the article from Time Magazine that Q linked to Durham specialized in prosecuting public corruption, uh, including several investigations of the CIA. And like we said before, the Gambino Genovese families and the Gambino families in brackets. All right. Q wrote, uh, are how are messages sent? How are messages sent? What message? What message are we sending and who's sending it? And who's interpreting it? Who are the, see, there's God, there's the church, there's the, the preacher. Uh, who's sending the message to the patsy? Who's sending the message? Who gave him the message? Who programmed in this age of programming? Nobody told him, go kill Frankie Cali directly. Right? No mob guy did it. But he certainly didn't act on his own. Right? He was radicalized in this fashion. And then we have confirmed this article, which is about this guy who gunned down mob boss Frank Kelly, supposedly drew a cue on his palm when he appeared uh, in court. And supposedly drew a cue on his hand. I just showed you the cue on his hand. Supposedly? No. Confirmed. Q and all the other uh, jargon that surrounded the cue. Inescapably Q. And... Uh, I'm not sure what the relation of, uh, of that is. There's a lot of guesses, but I don't have any. He seems to get a little nervous when he explains the story. A firm conclusion on that. All right. Uh, mainstream media. Con so nervousness. Am I, am I overreacting? Is he nervous? Or how are messages sent? And then we have this article, which is about this guy who gunned down mob boss Frank Kelly supposedly drew a cue on his palm when he appeared uh, in court. And uh, I'm not sure what the relation of, uh, of that is. There's a lot of guesses, but I don't have any firm conclusion on that. Hmm. Hmm. No firm conclusion on it, huh? So Marcus Conti reporting, interesting investigation, Mr. Praying Medic, today. And, um, you know, clarify, right? Marcus Conti reporting, this is what I... I'm, I'm very concerned. I'm very interested in knowing what you know about this individual. 
where, do, where was he looking? Where was he shopping for his Q information? Now, if it comes, if it comes time and his name appears in that court document and he's saying of or in his phone record or in his computer record, and Mr. Praying Medic or your, or your, your, your comrade uh, Jordan Sather or others pop up, then we are having, we're, we're moving towards confirmation that somebody told him, somebody told Camillo that he had the protection of the, the, the president of the United States. Now, if it's not you, per se, Mr. Medic, who, who is surrounding you? What names can you give us? What, what, which way can you point us to tell us who is radicalizing this guy? What team of grifters radicalized Anthony Camillo? What team of grifters radicalized Anthony Camillo, the boss, the killer of the boss of the Gambino crime family? Marcus Conti reporting.